Karen Spinavo here at Hedgesville High School, my alma mater. Join me as we learn about some of the wonderful teachers at the Home of the Eagles on this edition of Be the Difference, West Virginia. I'm here with Ben Merica, a physical education teacher here at Hedgesville High School. Hi, how are you? Fine, Aaron. How are you doing this I'm day? I'm well. Great. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, there's not a lot, honestly, other than the fact that I uh, um, am married and I have uh, three daughters and we have uh, four grandchildren and we're having a fifth one on the way. It should be here sometime in late October, early November. Uh, I have three daughters that all graduated from Hedgesville High School and uh, we're very happy about that fact and they're all wonderful young ladies doing jobs out in the world that will benefit others. Uh, one of our daughters is a lawyer in Charleston, South Carolina. One of our daughters is a, a beautician in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, one of our other daughters is going to be in the Department of Public Safety in Texas here in the near future. So we're real happy about this. My wife, Kayla, was a teacher here in, in Berkey County for 12 years and now she's uh, teaching outside of West Virginia. But uh, she's looking forward to the years when she comes back here to teach again. And uh, you know, I've been Blessed to be a part of Hedgesville High School for 35 years. It'll be my 35th year, and it's just a wonderful experience being here. So tell me a little bit about what made you decide to become a teacher. Well, the biggest thing, honestly, was uh, the role models that I had, the people that, you know, gave me a good foundation for my life. Um, certainly uh, my physical education teachers, uh, uh, Charlie Spencer and uh, Cecil Perkins and... Uh, my, my teachers that I had in general, uh, Miss Woods, English teacher, Miss Springer was an English teacher, uh, Colonel Stover, who was a social studies teacher of mine, Gilbert Miller, who taught me uh, government, and also Gilbert was a basketball coach of mine, and at one time a football coach of mine, and those guys always were, they were good people for me, they really helped me out, build a foundation, and made me understand that the, what the positive contributions can do for other people. I think that you think is very important for as a community and as for other people that are involved in lots of children to know about keeping our children active and keeping them physically involved. Well truly, Karen, what I really think is a, is a good thing for our children is to, first of all, as a, us as physical education teachers, to provide activity during the time that they're in class. And not only activity, but activity which they can carry on later and enjoy in their lives and also give them some knowledge because just because let's say you're a, a mom weren't real familiar with uh, basketball when you were in school you may have a child one of these days that is very interested and you can provide some of the groundwork for them as can some parents you know that they may not have been involved with any sports particularly growing up but if you provide them with the basic knowledge of them of that that can be some quality time that you and your child can have and and certainly you can build on it. But the biggest thing is to let them understand that there's enjoyment with activity, uh, that you know sometimes you have homework, but you can have fun homework too, doing physical things. And that uh, certainly um, being out in the great outdoors when it's nice and, and conducive is an enjoyable time and can lead you to get rid of some of those garden variety type blahs that we have that you know oftentimes we have stress build up in our lives and nothing can help relieve stress more than than physical activity and recent research has shown that uh, you know if a kid gets 20 minutes of activity uh, 20 minutes following that activity they're more receptive to learning from other types of materials such as you know your English classroom your science classroom uh, been a lot of things that have been uh, taught in different areas of our country recently about trying to put more activity into the curriculum with elementary kids and and see how they're adapting to you know pulling the other uh, knowledge out from other subjects, that, core subjects that we learn, and certainly I've always felt like, as a PE teacher and as a coach, that uh, that the time that I'm most uh, receptive is right after my activity. I, I seem to have that, that little bit of, uh, of um, attention that, you know, um, most of my teachers when I was in the elementary school, uh, they just said, you know. He just can't focus, but it was my ADD or ADHD that was driving them nuts. But at that time, we weren't diagnosed with it. But uh, certainly, I, I understand that you know it's a great thing to have is that that release of energy and and then the, the ability to focus after that. At the present time, I'm coaching freshman football, and I might add, we're off to a pretty good start. We're four and zero at the time, and 
and we have a week off this week, and then next week we have another week off. But uh, um, we're doing well, and I coach girls basketball and have coached girls basketball in one capacity or another for the last 14 years. And now I'm coaching girls softball, and, um, you know, that's an experience that, you know, I really never thought I'd ever teach I coach girls because I had three daughters, and uh, it just didn't seem right, you know. But uh, but because of one of those daughters, I uh, had a situation where there wasn't a volleyball coach available. I stepped in and found out how tough young ladies can be and <laughs> how they're not apt to cry and whine about a little bit extra activity like sometimes the guys are. And it's been a jo an enjoyable experience for me. And, uh, uh, you know, my mother raised me, and uh, so I... I, I, I kind of have some of that compassion that, that women have for other, other people. What roles that new coaches have in the, you know, the development and the social growth of our, of our students? Well, I certainly feel like, as I was telling you earlier, those were the role models for me, being raised by a mother. I didn't have a male role model in my life. And uh, I had a, a, a teacher who was my principal, and also he would play with us during recess. His name was Anthony Mercurio, and had another guy by the name of Bobby Saravlo and Philip Cole and and uh, Chester Burt, people who provided that male image for me around sports and made me, you know, gravitate towards those types of individuals. And uh, and going throughout my career, the coaches would be the ones that would show me, you know, the proper way to handle tough situations, not only the, the emotional but the physical. And, and uh, you know, you'd see your coaches... Um, you know, do things that you would say, wow, you know, I'd like to be able to, to do those types of things and be able to give back to young people the way that they did. And uh, certainly my college coach, Jack Reynolds in baseball, and Billy Bach later in my college baseball years, those guys, you know, were, were knowledgeable of things that they could help us with that we might be able to give as, as you know, uh, energy and efforts towards our own players that we might have. But Certainly the biggest thing that they provided was, you know, how you're supposed to treat other people from a male standpoint. So if you could pick one thing to, that you would want to address with the public misconception that is out there about the role that teachers have in the lives of students, based on your role as a teacher and then how teachers have affected you, what would you, what would you wish that you could clear up for the public? The, the fact that, you know, our, our classroom carries over way out past the school day and that we are not just there for those kids during our class periods but they can come to us at any time and you know if they need us in a call in the summertime or that we just you know we we teach because we love the, those kids. We're here in Sonia Schlocky's classroom. She is a social studies teacher here at Hedgesville High School. Hi Sonia, how are you? I am well. How are you today? Good. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I just started my 16th year of teaching. Um, all of them have been here at Hedgesville High School. And um, I do teach social studies, and um, world history is my subject. I don't teach any U.S. history, um, which is a little unusual. Um, but uh, I grew up between Jefferson and Berkeley counties. Um, my dad went to Hedgesville High School. My grandma went to Hedgesville High School. I did not. So, um, But when I started teaching, I knew this is where I wanted to go. So um, I'm married. Um, my husband Greg and I have two children, Emily is 10 and Nathan is 6. Wow. Not only do you teach, but you're probably involved in things outside of the school day that help oh, your yeah. students. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about some of those things that you do with your students outside of the traditional school day after the bell rings. Yeah. Well, um, I think it's been six years ago now. I had um, an AP World History class who begged me into starting a debate and speech club. And um, I had not a clue what I was doing. <laughs> and so I started doing some research. And uh, so we started a debate, um, a debate and speech club that year. And um, it's been going on ever since. And we've had some highs and some lows. You know, um, depends on the students and how much they want to invest themselves. Because it is a club. It does have happen after school. And they have to do so much of the work by themselves. Um, but I have a rotating door. Those kids are in my door. <laughs> um, uh, all the time before school and after school and at lunch and in between classes and I love that um, because I teach a lot of freshmen um, they see those older students coming in constantly um, to ask me questions and I think it sets a really great example for them so 
debate and speech takes up a lot of time. Um, we do tournaments. We participate in the Shenandoah Valley Forensics League, um, which is centered out of um, Fredericksburg, Virginia. And so we have our first tournament next Thursday. Okay. Well, what led you to become a teacher? Well, when I went to college, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I took you know, your basic liberal arts classes and that sort of thing. And I always had in the back of my mind that I would be a teacher, but I never really wanted to come into it. And I always joke that um, I had to major in social studies because I couldn't major math. <laughs> um, so, um, but really, my mom pushed me into teaching. Um, she's one of those very natural teachers. So when I was growing up, we'd go to the park and we would play in the leaves and that kind of thing. And then she would say, wait, stop. Get this caterpillar and then she would make this whole entire science lesson out of whatever she saw she's just a real natural teacher and i think it's kind of funny because um her business changed um she's uh, she owns her own business so her business changed a couple of years ago and now she is a teacher <laughs> to, for her business also so things have come full circle i suppose <laughs> so you're a social studies teacher and we hear a lot about math and reading and language mm -hmm. arts, but sometimes social studies is put on the back burner or it's not considered to be yes. as important. So what, as a social studies teacher, what do you see as the great importance that there is into promoting and teaching uh, social studies? Oh, well, I love social studies. Um, I've always been very curious where I came from. I was always peppering my grandma with questions about her family and where they came from, and she never had enough satisfactory answers for me. But our students should know where they came from. They should know their history. And their history is not just the United States history. They should know their world history. They should know where society has been. Um, they should learn from the history. Uh, they should learn not to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. It doesn't seem like we learn that lesson nearly enough. So what's a project or an activity that you're doing with your students right now in your classroom during the day that you're really excited about? We are starting China. We started with a little bit of it today, and um, it's ancient China. Um, I got to go visit China three years ago on an educator's trip, and ever since then it has been a great love of mine. And uh, so, uh, and once you've been to a place, it's a lot easier to teach, I think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I try to use things in my classroom um, that make it not so daunting to my students. Um, I, I tell them, I'm not here to confuse you. Um, so we're starting China, and specifically tomorrow we're starting an activity. We're going to be excavating a Shang tomb. And so they have pictures of things that were found in, um, in a tomb from the Shang dynasty, and then they have decoders and questions they have to answer. And it's really fun because I'm not giving them the information. They have to learn the information on their own. And they know it's so much better when they do it that way. But um, after we do the Shang Dynasty, we'll just move down through the dynasties and we'll eventually get to Chen Shai Huang Di, um, who's responsible for building the Terracotta Warriors. Um, and that's always a really big job because most people have seen them or heard of them or seen pictures and that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, China has been my great love as well. One misconception about what it means to be a teacher, what teachers do that you would like to clear up for the public about what it's really like. Well, I think people think that, oh, she teaches social studies and he teaches math and he teaches English and she teaches science and that it's just a subject and that all we do is we sit there and we turn the next page and we turn the next page, but in reality, we're teaching our students so much more than that. Um, I try to teach them responsibility, which is not something that's easily taught as I'm going to children at home or proving. Um, and uh, so, uh, but, um, you know, you need those lessons from multiple places, so I just kind of feel like I'm one stop along the way. But I think my favorite thing I really like to teach my students that's not social studies is respect. Um, the concept of respect will take you a long way, you know, with, uh, within your relationships with your peers and with your teachers, with your parents. Um, when you get into colleges, interviews, job interviews, um, you know, it's, it's a skill that is really worth learning. That's all for this edition of Be the Difference West Virginia. Join me next time as we learn more about the teachers here in wonderful Berkeley County. Until then, I'm Erin Spinoggle, reminding you to be different, but more importantly, be the difference. I'll see you soon.